Okay. Good afternoon and happy um, new year. It is uh, 2023. We came into the new year healthy and happy and um, welcome to Mom Balls. Welcome I'm Robin. To Mom Balls. <laughs> I'm Antoinus. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. You didn't tell me to introduce myself. No, 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 not yet. Sorry, Cherise. Uh, <laughs> we were probably looking at each other. You're like, waiting for your other person. I know, right? Yeah. Well, as you guys can see, we are missing a mom boss, and that is Nilka. And Nilka is, she's decided to take care of her health. Um, you guys know her journey with cancer. Um, so right now, we're going to all send her good vibes. Um, she's juicing, she's exercising, she's doing yeah. all that she needs to do, and she is focusing on her health and her family, which is her top priority. So everyone keep Nilka in your prayers. Yeah, so in the meantime, you have us too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So today um, I'm really excited because I get to bring um, on our show a friend of mine who my best friend of 42 years. So we actually met in the womb, right? Because... <laughs> Wait, that, would like, <laughs> that would seem like we're really old, but we're not. But um, she is, she lives in Tallahassee, Florida. Her name is Cherie Strawberry Fuller, and she is the proud mom of five beautiful kids, um, all athletes. So we, we're so excited to hear her stories. But she is my go to, you know, 42 years of friendship. All things sports, definitely fashion, spirituality, life issues. So um, just welcome. And we're excited to have you here with us today, Sharice. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm excited <laughs> to be here. Excited yeah. to be here. I've been keeping up with the mom balls and you guys have been doing some great things. So um, and talking okay. about much needed issues with uh, kids and sports. And I'm excited. Thank you. So, Sharice, awesome. so Robin knows you best, but not our viewers. So what yeah. are the ages of your kids? Okay. I have five kids. Um, let's start from the oldest. I have Jordan, who is 28. I have Jade, who is 27. I have uh, Jewel, who sometimes I get a little lost here, but I have <laughs> Jewel, who is 22. <laughs> And I have Chase, so I started over, and I have Chase, who's 14, eighth grader, and I have uh, Chandler, who's a, a 12-year-old uh, sixth grader. Okay. So, so yeah. I'm busy with Lots kids. Lots of babies. So yeah. I guess let's just jump right in. And um, I guess anybody, I mean, when you say you have five kids, like, that's a lot of kids. But then when you add the fact that I mean, it is a good thing, but when you right. add the fact that they're all athletes, right. that adds another layer to the responsibilities and the busyness of life. So tell us about how you, well, let me say this first before we get into your kids. You okay. are no, I mean, sports are no, um, is not foreign to you. Right. You played sports, your dad played sports, your brother played sports. So give us just a quick excerpt of what you did, what your brother did and what your dad did. Okay. So I grew up in a sports family. Basically, if you didn't play sports, you didn't belong. So, um, which not really, but kind of. So uh, my dad played um, basketball in college and he is originally from Louisiana. Then they moved to California. He went to Fullerton Junior College when they were really good in basketball, played two years there, then went to the University of Utah, continued his career and then was drafted God, it had to be in the 60s. So he played. So back in the 60s, there was the ABA and the NBA. So he was drafted in the ABA and then they merged into the NBA. And um, he played for several years. And then my mom was a swimmer. A lot of people don't know that, but she was a swimmer. I didn't even know that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> A yeah. leader was a swimmer. Yeah. I used to have to do those swim lessons and, the, and <laughs> I hated them. All those like competitive swim in the beginning. Anyway, so that was not my sport. Um, and then um so basketball was my first love, actually, of sports, because since I was the first born into the family, my dad handed me a ball very young because I would run around the gym and follow him. So everybody knew me kind of in the gym as that's Walt Simon's daughter. So, cause my dad was kind of known around, uh, Southern California, Orange County specifically as, 
you know, that, that dude, that basketball guy. So I was always running around the gym with a ball. So then my brother came along eight and a half years later. And so now we both, he's got two kids with balls in their hands. So, um, you know, I played, and then my aunt, so his, his, uh, sister played basketball at Cal state Fullerton and she played basketball. And then my uncle Rodney, his younger brother. So there's three of them. He played basketball at Fullerton college and he went on to play, um, in Europe. So my dad, let's go back to my dad. My dad played in college at university of Utah, was drafted, played in the ABA NBA, and then went overseas and played overseas for um, years. And then they do the dual coaching overseas. So he did that. Um, then he came back and he started coaching college and so forth. So basketball has always been our sports. And then I got into volleyball later. Uh, and track. I ran track in uh, both junior high and high school. So I played all three of those sports and that was just my thing. Then I went to Cal State Fullerton, played volleyball. Um, and did you go on a scholarship? I did. I did. Look at you. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. And, and the funny thing though, with that, with my dad, you know, um, my dad was, I was scared to go away to school. I don't know if you remember that Robin, when, um, the, I was playing travel ball club mm -hmm. ball for a team in, um, orange County called Newport. Well, first it was Newport beach volleyball club. And then I went, it changed to Ichabon. So I don't know those people out there that are volleyball people they'll know, but, um, I just, uh, was I wanted to stay home because I was nervous about going away. So yeah. I don't know, a lot of kids, I think you, you it, it's a big transition, but then I was like, no, I want to stay home. And my dad was trying to like push me out the door, but he didn't push me as hard as he did my brother. So I used to tell my dad, who's a little bit of a chauvinist. So I started, <laughs> you not make me go away. You know, <laughs> so I ended up at Cal State Fullerton, which is where I did not want to be. I wanted to be, you know, somewhere bigger, but um, it was fine. So, um, I stayed home and cause you know, Cal State Fullerton at that time was more of a commuter college. Right. So right. Laid there. Well, Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. So let's, because you said that's interesting that your dad tried to keep you home. And I mean, we have so many funny stories about mm -hmm. how your dad was a disciplinarian and he was really hard on you in basketball just oh, because yeah. he knew, you know, your potential. Right. Um, but he did want to. Um, or you wanted to stay home, but talk about Jade and Jewel who went away from home. Okay. So, yeah. So my brother, let me, let me stop and go to my brother, Miles. Okay. He, he played at modern day high school. Mm -hmm. uh, they won the state championship. I can't remember how many years. I don't know. He was, he did very well there. And then he went on to, there were several college coaches coming into the, our living room and it was kind of cool for him. And he decided to go to university of Arizona and then they won the national championship in 1997 mm -hmm. and he was the MVP. And then he was drafted by the Orlando magic a year later. And so he played in the NBA as well for a couple of different teams and then went on to Europe, Israel and Italy or Italy, Israel, Italy, and then CBA and that kind of thing. So uh, now he coaches for the Lakers so it's, or he went to ESP and then Lakers. So yes, um, my dad was super hard on us as far as training and, and, you know, if that's what we wanted, my dad said, okay, commit to this and this is what you're going to do. So then fast forward, I have three of my own who are all sport athletes, Jordan being the oldest chose, um, he played baseball, but then he chose basketball. And then Jade, uh, Jade and uh, Jewel. Both Sharice, played. hold on. Let me step you just a minute, just because I think it's very unique. To out. <laughs> no, but I think it's something that our viewers might want to know because okay. we talk about this. When you when you play sports, there's sacrifices that you make. So you live in Tallahassee, but when Jordan went to school, he wasn't in Tallahassee. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we we were started in Tampa. We left California due to. Uh, ex-husband's job. So we were in Tampa, based in Tampa and, uh, Jordan just felt the pressure of baseball. He didn't want to do that. So we, he liked basketball because of my brother and my dad, me, we, you know, I was like, sure, you can play basketball. That's fine. So we fostered that. And then it wasn't easy finding a good team in Tampa 
because Florida is not really a Mecca for basketball. It is, it, it's not now California. Yes. But, um, being from California. So, uh, then we moved to Tallahassee and, um, Jordan is going into high school and he decides, cause I had promised him that I was going to move back to California. And I said, no, nope, I'm getting remarried and moving to Tallahassee and Jordan was country. That ain't right. What? <laughs> it's the capital of Florida. So um, you'd think it's a little different, but it's really a college town. So it's if, if you're in politics here or if you go to Florida State or you're from here or you go to FAMU, that's kind of what uh, Tallahassee is in a nutshell, or if you grew up here. So Jordan, we sacrificed, like you said, there was a sacrifice to let Jordan go to a, a very, a powerhouse basketball school at the time, um, and had a history of it. And all the boys in my family, including my brother, um, cousins, uh, went and his, and Jordan's brother went to modern day to play basketball. And he had spent the summers there and that's why, why he wanted to go. So we made that sacrifice and said, okay, my family said, send him, we got him. Yeah. And so that was hard. That was hard to let my 14 and a half year old son go live in Cal in um, California and play at modern day at a high level um, basketball. And that's what he did. But in the meantime, I've got one that's right under Jordan and that's Jade and Jewel and I'm or Jade and I'm fostering volleyball for her here. So, um, you know, Jade starts playing volleyball, travel starts going, she, we have to get her into travel ball because she says this is what she wants to do. Jules, and where did Jay, where did Jay play volleyball? Uh, in high school or? In you know? um, college. Okay. Jade played at, well, she ultimately got to the uh, UConn, University of Connecticut on a full ride scholarship. So uh -huh. she worked that hard to get, get to that university. She went up North and decided to go away from home. She did. I told her do the opposite of what I did. Do mm -hmm. not stay here. <laughs> go to Florida State. <laughs> you know, go, go away. So she had many schools after her, you know, a lot of the ACC schools, a lot of the SEC schools, um, because we're on the set, we're in the South, you know, in Florida. So those are the schools that kind of saw her. She had a few of the West coast schools, but not as many. So that's, she chose UConn. She we went on a trip. She fell in love with it. They offered her and wow. she was like, mom, this, this is where I want to go. I was like, okay, get a nice new wardrobe for, <laughs> for the winter. Cause you want to, she's a California girl by way of Florida, going right. to Connecticut. Mm -hmm. So Cherise, what did her recruiting process look like? I mean, because now we know that kids do, you know, they get five official visits and things like that. Was it the same then with um, Jay? Yeah. And Jay? So she yeah. visits? Well, yeah, you can get your five official visits when you're a senior. So, you okay. know, but the recruiting process starts so much younger, mm -hmm. uh, especially nowadays. I mean, we know that when we get to my last child, well, my second to my last child, but uh, she didn't get to take all her five visits. So I, it's kind of a catch 22. You kind of end up doing all these unofficial visits on your dime and your dollar. So parents need to know that, that, you know, especially if you have a kid that's good at a younger age and colleges are coming after them, they say, yeah, come on, bring them and let them look at the campus. But it, that's on your dime. Mm -hmm. So, and it's just a sacrifice you make. So I, we took her to Duke. We took her to Clemson. We took her to, um, uh, um, Georgia tech. Uh, she went to wake forest. She mm. looked at Florida state. She looked at Yukon. She looked at, um, I think a school in Denver. So she went to the schools and then U Yukon. And that was like one of the last ones. It was between Clemson and Utah, uh, Clemson and Yukon. And so yeah. she, the recruiting process was coaches couldn't talk to you until your 11th grade at that time for volleyball. And it was very, she, you know, she was really shy and she didn't really want to talk to coaches. And so I'd write up questions. This is what you need to ask them. You know, this is what you, you can't just like be, don't say anything. You know? <laughs> like, they, you know, you can't just sit on the phone breathing. You know, they, they want to know your personality. They want to know right. if you're, so it, it's, it's stressful. So I'd sit in the room and I'd, you know, listen to her. And so then as she got more comfortable and it was okay. And then, um, so she did that and she just knew right away when she got to um, UConn, she wanted to go. So that was good. So she signed her, she committed in her junior, uh, junior year. 
and she signed her letter in her on signing day in her senior year. So I remember right that. and I remember when she sent my baby Jada because Jada used to always aspire to go to UConn to play basketball and Jada so sent basketball. her a UConn t-shirt and she will wear that shirt now and pictures I will find her in that UConn shirt even though she goes to Cal that was like you know the powerhouse basketball school. Well that's interesting because on her recruiting trip they brought Jean uh Gino uh in on the recruit visit to seal the deal with Jade. Like wow. they, because he's such a big figurehead there yeah. in women's sports there, they, they have a hall of fame kind of thing down there. And they show you like all the guys that have won because basketball for men's was good as well, but they, you, they bring you down there and you're like, Oh my God, look at this ha basketball hall of fame. And then they brought Gino in to talk to us. And I was like, she's coming for volleyball, Gino. Like, <laughs> sure. okay. but it was nice. It was a nice touch, you yeah. know, so that was good. So, um, what about Jewel? Tell Jewel us about was, her. You know, Jewel was a different, different because I had to experience Well, and we forgot about Jordan. Jordan went to Mercer. So he went to one year prep school after okay. high school. Cause he didn't get the offers that he wanted. Okay. Um, so we sent him to a prep school for a year. Mm -hmm. I would say to him, that was probably one of the best experiences to give him a little more time yeah. to figure out and get a better offer. Mm -hmm. Him, he said, I didn't like that experience, but I, I wouldn't take it. You just got to find the right fit. If, if any parents are out there that need a PG, you know, for a preferred graduate is what it's called. So uh, he went there and then he ended up getting an offer at Mercer University, which is the SOCON conference, pretty good conference. And he had a great time, got his degree for free. See, now that's what people got to remember. <laughs> You're getting, I've added, I've added up my kids scholarships, my three right now. And they have saved, saved us 700 and I don't know, seven, I think it's seven hundred thousand dollars mm -hmm. so of wow. scholarship. So, so you, got, you got go five ahead. kids. So you got three, three free out of the five so far? So far. And one is already committed for free for the next. Oh, for so you'll get five to five. <laughs> <laughs> the last one, the last one, we, we praying. So everybody tells me leave her alone, but. Um, so Jordan went there, he was closer to us. He was, you know, we could drive up and down the road and get to him and see all his games. It was great. Mm -hmm. Got his free. Therese, I don't want to interrupt you, but I have, I just feel like, tell us about that because I literally would be talking to you on the road. You travel for your kids. And Sacri that's sacrifice. So I think the traveling in the beginning, living here in Tallahassee for me personally, I was like, oh Yeah. I can travel because I can get, <laughs> I can go where there's good restaurants, shopping, whatever. But yeah, I, there was times where I was like, I got one kid in California playing high school basketball. I have another kid, Jade, underneath, underneath him playing volleyball, travel ball and basketball run at the same time. Then I've got Jewel who's coming up five years later, the ranks, but she, because she has an older sister and a mom that both played volleyball. Jewel is advanced because she picked up a ball at eight versus Jade picking up a ball at 12 or 11, you know? So she's always, she was in, she started earlier. So the traveling was, it's a lot of traveling. It's a lot of commitment. Um, I would be in the gym for volleyball, sometimes double duty because of the, um, uh, Robin, see, I'm, I'm, what are they called? The, your, your playing time. So there's, when you go to tournaments, you can get the morning, the waves, you get oh. the morning wave or the afternoon wave. So sometimes yeah. I'd be in there, Jewel would get the morning wave and Jade would get the, the, um, late wave. So yeah. that means I'm at the gym from 7am till eight o'clock at night. So with two girls who play, normally you wouldn't get that if you don't have two girls that play. So that was a lot of traveling. So just trying to keep up with all their schedule, trying to give them equal time. It, it's a sacrifice. People don't realize. And I didn't realize it until I had a break between Jewel and Chase, who are eight years apart, that I was like, wow, dang, I missed out on some life. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's so uh, funny. Sports <laughs> is everything because it's been everything in my life. That's what I grew up knowing. Yeah. But I, 
And I thought about it. I was like, did my dad ever take us on vacation? <laughs> Traveling, sports, pleasure vacation, right? right? Well, you know what my dad, you know what I used to go to? The NCAA Final Four. That's where my dad used to take Miles and I for our <laughs> vacation. For vacation. Final Fours. Now, it might be in Seattle. It might be in New Orleans. Yeah. It might be in Dallas. But that's where the that's where he used to take us. And I used to think that was great because that right. was my life. But, you know, fast forward 30 years and I'm or 25 years. And I look at now when I had this break with Jewel and Jade, even though Jewel was still playing college ball and Chase is coming up in the ranks in baseball, I was like, oh my God, all I do is go to a gym <laughs> and sit and watch sports. And I said, and then I see my friends like on a beach or, <laughs> you know, visiting somewhere, going right. out with their friends, having, you know, I said, I have really missed out, but you know what? I. I, I said to myself, I, I I don't think I would change it because the kids really excelled mm -hmm. and it gave them an opportunity to have edu an education for free, which is great. Yeah. And an opportunity to be with a team. And I always thought for my girls, especially, um, it was important for them to play sports because I think it just, I think it's, I just think it, it's shown Nike did a study way back then that it just prevents so many things for girls, mm -hmm. you know, it could be um, you know, sexual abuse or any kind of, you know, getting involved in stuff that you shouldn't get involved yeah, in. Even self-esteem right? issues. Self-esteem, mm -hmm. you know, peer pressure. It teaches you to how to work with other people, um, be a leader, you know, that it was just really good. So, um, yeah. And then Jewel came along and Jewel's, Jewel's recruiting, her recruiting process was different because she started younger. So she was being looked at in, um, because Jade was playing. So they saw the potential they'd see Jade and they'd be like, Oh, she's got a younger sister. So mm -hmm. Jewel, Jewel started going on visits her freshman year of high school and looking at different colleges. And I remember the first college she went to was university of Virginia for a camp. And she called me and said, Oh, I, I'm not, I don't want to go here. I don't well, what's wrong with Virginia? That's where I'm from. <laughs> the university of virginia she just well it might have been a little bit of the coaches and and the situation and then she was like um charlottesville was a little different okay so she said this i don't think this is the fit for me i said well you did you give them because you know when you have a kid that's heavily recruited like you said with um jade you're trying to trying to tell her, you know, how to talk to the coaches, what to say, be, show your personality, but how much influence did you have with them making the final decision? Were you very persuasive or did you kind of say whatever you think is best and let them go for it? I kind of let them pick whatever is best. I said, I think you need to look at coaches and make sure that you like the coaches and let's see the longevity of the coach. How long has the coach been here? Okay. What's their record? What do they look like? Do they look like they might be leaving? <laughs> Um, you know, and straight up answer I did. And then look at the girls on the team, because when you go on an unofficial visit, some schools let you stay in the dorms with the girls. And so they kind of get to meet the girls and kind of see who was going to be there. Like the freshmen are going to be closer to where they are. So okay. I kind of let them feel it out. Um, I never thought about trying to keep them close to home because there really wasn't a lot here. ACC definitely for Jewel was easier because she played Florida State. She played Clemson. She played Georgia Tech. She played all the schools that were closer where I could get to. Okay. Jade was harder. I mean, I literally, ha I was all over the place with Jade. Like she was playing in Texas and everywhere. Pennsylvania, Pitt. Well, Jay, uh, Jewel played Pitt as well too, Syracuse, those kind of things. So I kind of let Jewel, Jewel kind of had her mind up where she wanted to go. So mm -hmm. her recruiting process was a little different. Um, she had kind of set her mind and she wanted to go to Miami, University of Miami. And we went to, a, she went to a camp. She was young. She was a sophomore. And then we had a meeting with them. Now, because I had had my experience with my older two, I knew what questions to ask. Okay. Like what? Give us an example. Just a couple of questions. That you and asked. I think I shocked the, the coaches. So when we get in the meeting, they can't, sometimes it's a business. It's a business, which we think it's because it's our kids and our kids are going to play for their school or their, you know, their school that they think it's 
it's all, it, I took it as like, we're a family, but it's not, it's a business. <laughs> so I sat there and I listened to their spiel and I said, okay, let me ask you a question. Where is, what, what, where's Jewel on your chart? Like, is she your number one recruit? Is she your number two? Is she your number three? I need to know where she is. And mm-hmm. they were like, what? They didn't know because most parents aren't going to ask you. Right. Most parents are not going to go into a college coach and go, so where is Jewel? Right. Like, where's your kid? Where's my kid? Where's Jada? Where is she our number one recruit? Is she number two? And they were like, well, um, she's, she's our number two. So that was a hard pill for Jewel to sit next to me and ask that question. But I told her I was going to ask it. Mm-hmm. And uh, they said, she's our number two. If such and such this, we have another girl. If she doesn't commit, then we'd like Jewel. So I said, okay, thank you for being honest. I said, but let me tell you that we are leave When we leave here, there are two other ACC schools, which is in their conference that we are going to visit. And Ooh, talk about keep it real. <laughs> I said, and if they, <laughs> and if they offer her and she likes it, we may just take it. So we're not gonna, you know, and they were like, would you please give us like, call us if you, if you get an offer from another ACC school, I didn't tell them which ones because they didn't need to know. And they said, would I call? And I said, um, I, I might, I might, I can't guarantee it. So, um, so was one of those schools, Boston, where she, okay. College, yeah. So we went to visit two more schools. Boston college was one of them. She went there and, and that school came on late in the radar. Like they started watching her on courts at volleyball tournaments and, you know, they give their card to her coach cause they can't directly talk to her. And so, um, we went there and it's a beautiful campus. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. And the academics, you know, you can't beat the academics there. And she said, I love it here. I want, this is where I want to go. And I said, are did you, you sure? call back or you didn't? I did not. I, I wouldn't have either. <laughs> I called, and I, I didn't do let it. Him, to, let them find out. <laughs> I, I, I called her travel coach and asked his opinion and said, do I need to call them? And he said, no, you don't owe them anything. Exactly. Um, so you do what's best for Jewel. And if that's the fit and they're offering her and they want her, because I learned a long time ago from a coach, a volleyball coach, uh, when I was doing, going through the recruiting process with Jade, go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. Mm-hmm. So that's, that was something that had stuck in my mind with the kids and their, and their recruiting process. And, you know, so Jewel was happy. I love that. I love that you asked the tough questions. And I think that that's important for you know, our viewers to know that it's okay to sit at the table because you're bringing, you know, you're bringing someone, they have something to offer, but you have something to offer and it's your kid, but it's also, like you said, it's a business and you want to be able to have those honest conversations. Now, when you get there, you got to make sure that things still line up the way that you want things change, coaches change, but going in the door you definitely want to ask those questions, those tough questions. And I don't want to run out of time. Okay. Because, um, you know, this conversation is amazing, but I definitely want to talk about your eighth grader Chip <laughs> <Okay>. Boulder, <laughs> because he's a powerhouse baseball player and we got to hear the latest and the greatest that's going on with him. Okay. So Chase is, um, where do you want me to start? Chase, Chase is an eighth grader. He just turned 14 and he is the number one player in his class 2027. Uh, He's a shortstop. He earned those honors last year. He worked really, really hard. Chase, if Chase out of all the kids, I mean, they all work hard. I'm not going to say that, but no, because all the kids work hard. They all work at their own pace, but Chase has been pushed a lot by, by Corey, his dad. And um, because he said, this is what he wants to do. So we said, okay, we'll, we'll make it happen. Now, Chase is a different story as far as Travel ball for Jade and Jewel was here local. Chase was playing on a local team. And unfortunately, it's something we call daddy ball. And that means that we got coaches that we got four coaches and they all have kids on the team. So that takes up a lot of spots where we would rather you. I think you'd rather have a a kid or coaches that not necessarily have kids on the team. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. Why? Because why why wouldn't you want <laughs> say it? Daddy's coaching sons. Because I feel like sometimes kids that are better don't get the opportunity if we want to be real. They're gonna let so, their kids play. 
Right. But they, but, but I also get, I also get that if you are taking the time to coach everybody else's kids, shoot, I guess if I was out there, but I never had the problem that my kid hasn't been good. So, but I guess if I was coaching volleyball and I had, and my daughters weren't as good, I, you know, I probably put them into. Yeah. So, but then you yeah. had to, you had to look at that and, and make a shift, right? And make a change. So Chase, we went to the elite world series one year, he was probably nine or 10 and we, we did okay. And then we lost and, you know, baseball's not cheap. Travel ball period is not cheap for most sports, but baseball is super expensive. And we were traveling for a week and we were staying somewhere and we lost and chase doesn't like to lose. None of us like to lose. And he was like, Dad, I'm tired of playing for this team. So we had met up with some, another team that was interested in chase. Now this team is based out of Jacksonville, which is two hours away from me. Mm. So we sat down one night and we said, Chase, do you really love baseball like this? Do you love it? Now, Chase, I love it. Too. And he was like, yes, dad. He's like, do you want to go out for this other team? Do you want to try? Chase said, yes. So we allowed it. We took him to try out in Jacksonville and he made the team. And then we said, there was a starting shortstop there. And we said, you got to beat the shortstop out because they're not going to just give it to you. So he did that. So fast forward, we've been doing this for four years. We tra- I traveled to Jacksonville, Corey, myself, Chase, sometimes Chandler, tag along when we first started going two days a week um, on a school night, like get in the car, Chase, two three o'clock, away. get in that line. I got your baseball stuff in the back. Huh? So two hours two, away? Two hours away. Oof. I would say, I got your back. I got your snack. I got your bas- your baseball bag in the back. Let's go drive practice and that was the starting journey of you know him really committing to baseball so fast forward chase um became player of the year last year he won those player of the year perfect game player of the year and then came the rankings came out in september october as um, class rankings and he was the number one player so um and then he was being um recruited at a young at a young age young age by a lot of colleges. And so he had a couple of full offers from some other schools and he chose Florida state. So he's committed. uh, He committed about a month ago to Florida state to further his academic and his athletic career. So it's pretty young. Yeah. But But baseball goes young, right? mm -hmm. At the younger you are, the better. Yeah. Yeah. So he kind of, I don't think they recruit. I mean, eighth grade is pretty, pretty, um, a pretty amazing thing to be you know to get an offer like that and um why did he choose Florida State Sharif okay so he was looking at a bunch of different schools and he went to visit a couple of them and he just you know he's like "Eh, it's all right you know and then Florida State I think I, I I think there might be a little misconception because Corey went to Florida State coaches football at Florida State but Corey really had nothing to do with it he said Chase, if you want to go to Florida State, you go to Florida State. University of Florida offered him a full ride. There's a couple other schools that um, were uh, that offered and were interested. He was looking at LSU, Tennessee, Alabama, Arkansas, um, Miami. He was talking to a lot of coaches, and he just he went to University of Florida and he liked it, but. He just said, dad, I, I just want to go to, I want to go to Florida state. And then I said, I know you're happy about that. Cause that's like a stone throw away. Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I know what you, you know, but I've always been like, go away. You know, I told yeah. Jaden, Joel, get out here, go, you know, Jordan, go, go, you know, yeah. so this will be different. It, you know, Chase going to school here. So I think it'll be a lot of fun. I think it'll be amazing. And we'll see if he even goes there. Okay, so we have about five minutes left, and I just know the common theme um, sounds like sacrifice and commitment, you know, and just allowing your life to be taken over, you know, because literally Latuanis, myself, you know, we experience that our calendars are full of sports, sports, sports with chance um, at LMU. I mean, I see your snaps. Tawana's, I mean, she's either on the freeway or watching, you know, and we're doing the same thing, flying, traveling, um, driving. So what would you um, like to leave our viewers with, with 
keeping in mind that the theme is your common theme has been sacrifice and commitment, but what's one thing that you would like our viewers to know as we leave this interview or podcast? Oh, wow. Um, that, I mean, if your kid show, if your kid loves sports and they show potential and they want to play, then I think as it's our duty as parents to kind of like foster that. And you do give up, you do sacrifice a lot. And like I said, I didn't realize the sacrifices until, you know, not too long ago. And I was like, oh my God, everybody's going all these, but I'm missing out on this. But you know, I wouldn't change it because I feel like my kids got the best opportunity, got to go to three amazing top universities and play sports at that level for that school. So they got, it was- I, and in closing, I'd like all the interviewers to know as many sacrifices as I've made and we've made as a family, it's all been worth it in the end. It's paid off. Uh, four out of the five kids so far have had full ride scholarships So as I was saying, I missed out on a lot of things, but I would never trade it for um, pouring into my kids and sacrificing so they can live out their dreams with education and sports.